Tap three mana, ice cream with banana. Now our problem solved. Okay, gather around, guys. It's time for a, a story about Magic the Gathering. This this Magic the Gathering story is about ninth edition, released July 29th, two thousand five, and about Gen Con, which is August eighteenth to twenty first, two thousand five. So ninth edition wasn't re, uh, was released, but it wasn't legal yet. You get a couple of days, about two weeks after a set's released, until it finally becomes part of the rotation. That's when a set rotates out. Magic the Gathering, um, and hobbies in general, um, a fad lasts two years, and then it dies. There were uh, pogs back in the 90s, these little circle pieces of cardboard. You, you, could, you could collect them, they had like, goosebumps on them, or whatever. And uh, after two years, it just died. Beanie Babies, McDonald's in the 90s, really popular, little fuzzy creatures you can put on top of your computer. Once again, after two years, the Beanie Baby crazy, Crazies died. They still exist. It's just people don't actively collect them on a daily basis like they did back in the 90s with Pogs and stuff. So Magic Gathering has to rotate. And this was Gen Con. Half of Gen Con was before rotation, and half of Gen Con was after rotation. So you had some pretty interesting things happen. For example, in the first half of Gen Con, you had Goblin King. It's a Lord from Revised. It looks like a really good card. It all comes in play, gain Mountain Walk, and plus one, plus one, while this card remains in play. It's kind of archaic wording, but the most important part about Goblin King, it was a summon Lord. It wasn't a Goblin. Ah. But, if you look at Goblin King 9th edition, it's a Goblin Lord. It's not a Goblin. It's a Goblin Lord. And it's not a Lord. It's a Goblin Lord. They finally fixed uh, the, the wordings. They decided to fix uh, all the lords, give proper creature types. They were cyclopses and giants. You know, let's just call all the cyclopses giants. It's like the same thing, right? They're big hulking creatures. You know, like the griffins, there's birds. There's, there's, a, there's a griffin, um, a golden griffin that gives all the griffins like plus one, plus one. Let's just call all the griffins birds because they are birds. And the problem with Magic the Gathering terminology is uh, if you have a card that gives all griffins plus one, plus one or if you have a card that gives all birds plus one, plus one, the, the birds don't pump the griffins and the griffins don't pump the birds. It's a problem with Magic the Gathering. So they just decided, hey, let's just give these cards you know, two words instead of one for the creature type. And they don't use summon anymore. They use this creature. But I'll, I could still use a summon. It's a summon goblin. Ha, ah, take that. I can use archaic language. So the first half we're playing some onslaught goblins with siege gang commander goblin pile driver. These are cards that are actually still played today. Siege gang commander was uh, five mana, and it could create three goblins, which means it's better than goblin scouts. Goblin scouts is five mana, it creates three goblins. It creates three goblins, and you can sacrifice columns to do two damage to any target. And guess what? It gets reprinted over and over again. It's in Dominaria. So that in Dominaria is a, uh, a type 2 legal set. It's legal and standard. And then there's Goblin Pile Driver. And guess what? Goblin Pile Driver gets reprinted. Goblin Pile Driver is a 1 2 protection from blue. How weird is that? And when an attack gets plus 2 plus 0 until I have turned for each other attacking Goblin. Once again, it's an onslaught standard. It gets reprinted in Magic Origins. So hey, we have like, this is so weird. This is like 2005, just ends up in, in 2018 for some reason. Isn't that strange? Uh, so ninth edition w was crazy. And the ninth edition um, played some extended, got beaten by goblins a lot. So I said, you know, enough is enough. Uh, the metagame is kind of stale. I keep fighting onslaught goblins all the time. Goblin Sharpshooter. Let's just play a different format. So let's just play Creature Feature. My Creature Feature deck is this. Uh, it's white-black Pestilence deck. Pestilence is um, kind of roguish in, in Popper metagame at the moment. But the, the cool part about a white and black deck is white and black have always been classic opposite colors. And it's tough for a deck builder to build a deck 
uh, with with opposing colors because Magic the Gathering. I feel like Magic the Gathering is an essay. Uh, you have these sixty cards, and they're like your essay. And it's just like the rules of essay. You you need a, a supporting paragraph. You need an intro paragraph. You need a concluding paragraph. And you need to say what your deck does, because if you build a deck and all it has is a bunch of say it's just it's called Angel Clan or something, just a bunch of five or six mana creatures. If if that's your essay. Uh, you just don't have any like cohesiveness to the deck. It's just a bunch of cards that are just enormous. And you play an Angel Clan deck and you just lose the game because you just don't have any idea of how magic works. There's rules. You have to get your opponent down to zero life. You have to um, you have to play cards almost every turn. It's the basic rules of Magic the Gathering. So here, I, I build a white black deck and. Uh, yeah, Pestilence is, is a mix. It's, it's basically uh, gaining life and each player losing life. Black is good at that cards that say that gives loss of life, and white is good at cards that say gain life. And uh, the crazy part about Pestilence, uh, I'll show you the card. We'll just open up. Uh, sure. Pestilence is this crazy card that if there's no creatures in play, you sacrifice Pestilence. What an ugly card. There we go. Now it's pretty. <laughs> it's got a kid dying of pox. Now it's the right picture. <laughs> so the problem with Pestilence is you have to have creatures on the battlefield, otherwise Pestilence goes away. So the fix, Beloved Chaplain. What an amazing card from, from Odyssey uh, Onslaught Standard. So one, one is protection from creatures. Um, you can, you can have Beloved Chaplain combo with Crypt Rats. Crypt Rats deals X damage to each creature and player, spend only X mana in this way. You can Crypt Rats the board, Beloved Chaplain win, lives. So you actually can, can try to lock down the entire board. Bane of the Living, it's another kind of Pestilence card. Uh, when it's turned faced up, all creatures get minus X, minus X until end of turn. Yeah, pretty crazy. So it actually makes a big question exactly what, what protection is. Um, we'll get to that. Um, the deck's got Exalted Angel, also a great card from, from Odyssey Onslaught Standard. Uh, it's basically three mana. It's just a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, if your opponent doesn't do anything, you can turn four. If you just keep making a land drops, you can just morph it for white, white, two. It turns into a 4-5. It's got doubled power. And when it deals damage, you gain that much life. Oh, thank you, Amy. You just lowered the nice boom for me. We got a nice boom, so the sound's going to be a little clearer. And how do you make four land drops in a row? It's kind of hard in Magic the Gathering, but you can do it with Weathered Wayfarer. You can search your library for a land card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. And notice the wording for that. It just says a land. Usually these cards just say basic land. This just says a land. So you can do any land at all. So it could just be a plains. It could be like a Ganjo castle. Oh, the game isn't like. Oh, <laughs> oh no! I can't spell I Ganjo castle. I Ganjo castle is a card that um, it's a legendary land, and it can tap to prevent next two damage to uh, a legendary creature this turn. So it's like a super planes, but it. It, it's exactly like a plant. So you can just throw, if you just throw a one eye Gandros castle in your deck, there's really no harm in it. I don't see why more decks just don't just do this stuff. Even if you just have like one legendary creature in your deck, it is a planes plus something else. And even if this helps you like one game out of a thousand, shouldn't this be part of your repertoire of cards in your deck? So that's the deck. And now we're wondering, here's, here's the meat of, of what I'm talking about. We're running creature feature. Creature feature is your deck is all creatures. All instants are banned, all sorceries are banned, and enchantments are banned, artifacts are banned. You fill your deck full of creatures. I think the rules also you have to include 30 creatures. I'm not sure. Creature features in fun format. It's a shame it's not an MTGO. Yeah, this this is kind of dead. Oh, Baron's creature feature, Baron's creature feature. Yeah, it's a thing. It's kind of old. Um, this was two thousand five. 
it's fun just you know if you're tired of just playing the standard and extended meta game it just gets really stale after a, a while and um uh, like i said this is this is the end this is right before rotation and you're like well let, let's just let's just play this let's just play this so um i, I play this game uh creature feature is pretty fun actually some other people had this good idea of having pestilence like creatures and their decks actually fought against a bane of the living deck because um well if all if all you have is creatures then any kind of wrath of god effect is just super powerful and there's not many creatures that actually do pestilence like effects in magic the gathering um so I, I made it up to the finals and basically i was second place undefeated versus first place undefeated and he says you know let's Let's go for an early lunch or an early dinner, and let's, let's intentionally draw. In Magic the Gathering, I do not intentionally draw, even at the final round. I actually feel like it's some kind of collusion, because what it's doing is, if, you're, if you have like two undefeated players, and then they draw the final round, then they rank higher than any player who had any kind of loss. So if you get a loss like first round, and you win every single game afterwards you still get weak prizes in, in a medium tournament. And this this is like 16 to 48 people in, in Gen Con uh, alternative tournaments. So uh, I tell him, ask him, what are you playing? He says, goblins. And this is the like the first time I actually almost considered about intentionally drawing because it's like, can I beat goblins? I just got beaten from goblins the first two days of Gen Con from Goblin Pile Driver. So I'm like, maybe I, this is the first time I ever intentionally draw. So I'm like, no, let's just play it out. So of course I get trounced by goblins because once again they get this super boost with Goblin King. Um, so lose game one, game two. Uh, he has I have beloved Chaplin into play, and uh, you'll never guess what he has. Let me. It's a. Uh, let's see if I can think. Of it. He has actually a cycling goblin, and what this goblin does is when you cycle it, I want to say like goblin spark cutter, but what it does is uh, when you cycle it for red one, it deals damage, alright, I don't have it, equal to the number of goblins you control, um, and he casts it on my beloved chaplain, and like, this is for the game, this is like for first place. So I'm like, you can't do that. This is protection from creatures. And the interesting part about cycling is it's not a cast trigger. It's not a spell. Um, but what protection means, it's four abilities. It's, say, protection from white is, or, or say, protection from red. It, you can't be blocked by red creatures. Damage dealt to it by red sources is reduced to zero. Which means uh, you can't target it by red spells or abilities. Which go back to the rule too, like you can't lightning bolt it, but you can still cast earthquake and deal like X damage to each creature, even if you can't ca target it by a, by a lightning bolt. Um, but that damage would still be reduced to zero. And it's a fourth ability, which is red enchantments on it fall off. It's really hard to remember that four abilities, but protection is a really difficult ability to remember. So we call it judge, judge the goblin dex, targeting my beloved chaplain with a cycling goblin. And it says protection from creatures, and it says creature on the card. And the judge says, it's not a spell. <laughs> so the judge allows it. So this is this is a level one judge. All right. So I'm like, he, he the goblin deck says you, you can um, appeal it. I have never appealed a DCI judge before. To be a DCI judge at Gen Con. It's like 16 hours of volunteering. You have to go to four tournaments as a level zero judge. You have to be under the supervision of a higher level judge. And then you have to go through all four tournaments and take a test. And you have to get a pretty good score to pass. If you're level one and you want to be a level two judge at Gen Con, they did have a level two judge all the way from Ohio. Drove to Indianapolis for Pro 2 Qualifier Last Chance Austin. So they had a level two. Uh, getting DCI judges of higher levels is just exceptionally rare because to be a level two, you have to get a 100% on the test. You can't miss a single question. 
So I tell the decide judge, you're wrong. I know there's a judge from Pro Tour Qualifier Austin uh, in, in the building. Go find him. I delay, like, the end of the tournament, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> This is this is the the front table. This is first place and second place fighting each other. This is this is for this is for like twelve packs. Whoever wins, this is a big deal. It's not really a big deal actually. Driving from Ohio to Indiana to talk about like winning twelve packs and deciding who wins the twelve packs is kind of dumb because it costs more than twelve packs in gas money to drive from Ohio to Indiana. But anyway, there's a higher level judge there, and uh, he rules. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. And he says to level one judge, you understand why? And level one judge says, yeah, I've never seen a level one judge wrong before. They're usually pretty smart. I actually almost became a level one judge, except, like, if I judged four tournaments instead of played in four tournaments, uh, I would have lost 39 packs. Because I won, like, nine packs, nine packs, nine packs, and 12 packs. Uh... Yeah, that'd be like a box of cards I wouldn't have. That that's like opportunity cost for me to become a judge. So I never actually became a judge. It's it's quite sad. Uh, the hobby shop had its like hundredth birthday because uh, uh, it wasn't actually a card shop. Hobby shops are like selling like model plane engines and model car engines kind of stuff, model airplanes. And uh, even before the Wright brothers and Kitty Hawk like flew. Uh, there were still model airplanes before the first airplane flew with a person on it. It's a really simple design. People just didn't think that people could ride in airplanes. So we have this really old hobby shop, and I'm like, I should be a judge. And, uh, well, I didn't become a judge. Uh, but at least I can know I'm smarter than a level one judge. Because playing Magic for 24 years was rocked. So anyway, win game two. Game three, he just has his card. Uh, it's a goblin that comes into play. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put all the goblins in it in your hand. It's two two creature for red three. I forget what it's called. Uh, he just gets lucky. He just grabs like three or four goblins every time, like three times in a row. So I I I, I crypt rats all of his goblins away. He searches his library. Oh, thanks, Amy. I'm closer to the boom. I crypt rats all his goblins away. He searches his library for like four goblins. He grabs like f all four goblins. There's no lands on top of his deck. So I just lose a game. I'm still proud. I win like, I, I don't know, a couple of packs. It's like like fifth through eighth prize. It's not it's not second. If I had like tied with him, um, you know, there wouldn't have been any chance I'd get first. But first wins twice as much as second, and second wins twice as much as third. And... Uh, so fifth through eighth really is, is uh, amateur prize. I think it was worth it. Uh, if if you're someone who just refuses to uh, ID, potentially draw, just give a give a comment on on the comment section. I'll give you an attaboy. boy. Uh, that's creature feature. Still plagued by meta game, I guess. Uh, not a, not a format that uh, I would get deeply into. Uh, still a fun way of just brewing a deck and just testing it out and. Um, Gen Con's a great place to do it in because there's already tons of Magic players in there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And if you want a notification, click the bell icon below. If you really like it, share with your friends. And if you really, really like it, give Dan Horning money on Patreon. And give me money. I love money. Do all the things. Cast mind right on yourself.